If you've ever taken an edible product and realized it didn't work and you never felt high, here are three reasons why you may not be feeling the effects of edibles. And before we get going, uh, if everyone wants to get their favorite relaxing beverage, today I'm gonna be drinking masala chai. Uh, we can relax and have this conversation together. So the first theory that I'm gonna propose, and I'm saying theory because Nothing here has been absolutely solidified by science. Uh, these are just theories that people are contemplating based on the evidence that we do have. So the first has to do with how you metabolize that edible. So remember, no matter if you're eating a special brownie or a cheeseburger, your body needs to process whatever that is that you just ate. So that includes uh, your liver actually using enzymes, which are like little machines in your body, your liver uses enzymes to convert those active molecules, in this case we're talking about THC, to convert them in a form that's easier to excrete or to get out of the body, okay? So there's multiple steps here, and the first step is your liver is going to convert THC to a different molecule called 11-hydroxy-THC. Now, this molecule is thought to actually be a little bit stronger than regular delta-9 THC found in the plant, and that's why some people sometimes feel really, really unexpectedly high from edibles. Um, but in this case, what we're going to focus on is that not everybody's liver enzymes are working properly and not everyone has the exact same liver enzymes and specifically like different types of these liver enzymes. There's a family of these enzymes called cytochrome P450 enzymes and there's specific forms of these that are responsible for this conversion. If your body does not possess uh, the right amount, the right ratio, or it just produces different types of these liver enzymes, you're not going to be able to process the THC into 11-hydroxy THC. So the 11-hydroxy THC won't be circulating in your body, and you're not going to feel high from that edible. I know that's really, really kind of sciencey, but what we need to focus on is your liver enzymes are not properly converting or processing the THC, so you can't feel the effects. So you could either have different types of these enzymes, or another theory is that the THC is converted to 11-hydroxy THC, but then immediately converted to the next step in that process, which is an inactive molecule. So you don't feel high from it. Or I shouldn't say inactive, it's non-psychoactive uh, form of that molecule. And I'll show that on here on the screen as well. So that's the first theory that your liver enzymes aren't working properly, so you cannot metabolize THC and you cannot feel the effects from the edibles. So that is a genetic um, issue. So it's not really something that we know a fix for right now. Now, the second theory that I'm gonna talk about is the ability for your body to absorb the THC. So in this case, I think uh, many people don't think it really matters how you take your cannabis edible. Um, so if you take it on an empty stomach or a full stomach, doesn't really matter. That's not true. We actually do have recent data, which I'm gonna show on the screen here, that we absorb cannabinoids. This data is for CBD, but it is definitely thought that this is translatable to THC as well because they are similar fatty molecules. So your body absorbs the cannabinoids better when taken with a fatty food. So we're gonna talk about why that is. So when our body takes in an edible product, it needs to process it in order to be properly absorbed in our small intestine. So our body's gonna do this by creating these structures called micelles. And micelles are what I like to think of as like little balls that are gonna encapsulate those active molecules, the cannabinoids, in order to be absorbed better so that they can be processed and we can feel the effects better. Now, these micelles are made of various components, and some of these components are made when we're ingesting anything. So if we eat a string cheese or an apple or whatever, our body's going to produce some components of this. And then other components of these micelles are only produced when we eat fatty foods. 
So in theory, if we eat more fat with that edible, we're able to produce more of these micelle structures, which allows it to be absorbed into the small intestine better. However, this is kind of a bell curve. If you, if you eat too much fatty foods, it might actually inhibit the absorption of these molecules. So think of it as like eating a slice of pizza or something to that quantity rather than a whole pizza when you're about to take an edible product. Now a question I get asked all the time is, can you still feel edibles if you don't have a gallbladder? And this answer is definitely complicated. I get a lot of yeses and a lot of noes. But essentially, the theory behind this is some people don't feel edibles if they don't have a gallbladder because the purpose of the gallbladder is to release bile into the small intestine and that's going to help with fat absorption and digestion. So if you don't have a gallbladder, the way of processing fats is definitely going to be impaired, but it's not going to just completely stop you from being able to feel edibles. So one thing, uh, many people who don't have a gallbladder are taking digestive enzymes like lipase, and this is going to allow you to absorb fats better. Um, not only this, but our liver can directly release some of these bile salts right into the small intestine so that we don't need the gallbladder in order to process fats. Um, so you might either not feel edibles or feel edibles less if you don't have a gallbladder. Now, the third theory people might not really like because it has to do with how we're actually producing the edibles. So this does not have to do with people who are purchasing their edibles at dispensaries. This one has to do with people who are producing their edibles at home. So people who are producing their edibles at home are probably, hopefully, familiar with a process called decarboxylation. Decarboxylation is a process where we heat the cannabis in an oven and this is going to activate our cannabis. So what do we mean by activate? What we mean is that the plant is actually producing these molecules in what we call the acidic form. So they contain a acid group on that molecule. We need to remove that acid group, which we can see circled here in red, and when we remove that acid group, that molecule has been activated. It's much more psychoactive. It's much more um, available in our bodies, and we're going to feel the effects from it. So if you're making edibles at home, an absolutely key necessary part of that production is to decarboxylate your flour in the oven. Uh, there's now different um, products that you can use to decarb your flour, such as the Ardent, which I use. But if you do not decarboxylate your product correctly, your product is going to be inactive or just non-psychoactive. And you also need to make sure that you're infusing your product in a proper medium like a butter or an oil or something fatty that can actually take up those molecules and they can be solubilized and then you can bake with them and make other products with them. So definitely make sure if you're making your own edibles and you can't feel the effects from them, but you do feel the effects from dispensary edibles, um, definitely look into your process and make sure you're properly activating that those compounds correctly um, and then hopefully you can solve that problem. One other kind of just side theory I'll talk about is even your gut microbiota may play a role in how you feel edibles. Um, for instance, some gut, gut microbiota can change molecules and render them inactive or active uh, before they're even reaching circulation. This is definitely just a theory, but it's something to think about because we really don't know why exactly some people don't feel edibles, but it is definitely unfortunate. And I would recommend um, people who don't feel edibles to try out other products such as um, nano emulsified products. So like beverages, those ones are made with a different technology that can kind of pass by some of these issues that we're talking about. And you may still feel the effects from these products.